Finally, we'll look at the modification of cell surfaces. We're going to look at cell surfaces in animals separate from cell surfaces in plants because they're very different. The extracellular matrix in an animal cell is a meshwork of polysaccharides and proteins. Um, collagen is one of these proteins, and collagen resists stretching, giving the matrix strength uh, and resilience. There are also fibronectins and integrins. They bind to the membrane receptors and permit communication between the matrix and the cytoplasm. These proteins also form highways that direct the migration of cells during development. Proteoglycans are glycoproteins that provide a packing gel that joins various proteins in the matrix and most likely regulates signaling proteins that bind to the receptors in the membrane protein. So here you can see um, examples of fibronectin, elastin, collagen, uh, proteoglycan, and then integrin. Cells are held together in animal cells by um, a number of different kinds of junctions. Um, let's look here at the different kinds of junctions. The first one are adhesion junctions. These mechanically attach adjacent cells. In desmosomes, internal cytoplasmic plaques firmly attached to the cytoskeleton with each, within each cell are joined by integral membrane proteins to hold the cells together where tissues stretch, like in the heart, the bladder, and then the stomach. In the tight junctions, plasma membrane proteins attach in a zipper-like fashion, holding cells together so tightly that the tissues are barriers. And this is where we have um, uh, an impermeable kind of a um, surface, like the epithelial lining of the stomach, the kidney, and also in the blood-brain barrier. Then there's the gap junction. This allows the cells to communicate with each other um, and it's formed when two identical plasma membrane channels join. So here are the membrane channels within those, and it allows the cytoplasm to communicate. All of these different kinds of junctions provide strength to the cells and also allow movement of small molecules and ions from the cytoplasm from one to the other cell. Gap junctions will permit the flow of ions in heart muscles and smooth muscles so that they're able to contract. Next we move into plant cell walls. It's interesting to note that the plants are surrounded by a porous cell wall. Uh, it varies in thickness depending on the function of the cell, but that the cell walls are porous, allowing materials to move towards the plasma membrane. Plants have a primary cell wall that's composed of cellulose polymers and united into thread-like microfibrils that form fibrils. The cellulose fibrils form a framework whose spaces are filled by non-cellulose -cell molecules. Here you can see the cell wall of one plant, a cell wall of another plant. Non-cellulose polysaccharides harden the walls of mature cells. Lignin is present and adds strength and is a common ingredient of secondary cell walls in woody plants. Not all cells um, and plants have the secondary cell wall, but woody plants do, and we'll talk about that later when we talk more about plants in 102. And then there are plasmodesmata. These are narrow channels, and, and they're membrane-lined, and they pass through the cell walls of neighboring cells. They connect adjacent cytoplasms, and they allow exchange of some molecules and ions and gases between neighboring plant cells. Let's take a look at membrane transport. Part of metabolic activity is the ability to move materials into and out of cells. This is important in cell communication and normal cell function. For example, in order for the cells of your nervous system to function properly, ions, water, proteins, and other molecules need to be able to pass into and out of cells. The cells of the nervous system form networks. They, like all cells, are able to function because they can control what substances are inside the cell and what substances stay outside the cell. 
These materials move in and out of cells by passing through the plasma membrane of the cell. The plasma membrane surrounds the cell and separates the interior of the cell from its environment. This semi-permeable membrane is composed of a lipid bilayer. Phospholipids make up a large part of the membrane and form a bilayer. The structure of the bilayer is due to the tail-to-tail -tail packing of the nonpolar hydrophobic tails composed of two fatty acid chains and the polar hydrophilic heads composed of glycerol and phosphorylated alcohol. The lipid bilayer is 5 to 10 nanometers thick and is embedded with proteins. Some cell membranes also contain cholesterol. A plasma membrane contains different types of proteins which are specific to the particular function of the cell. These proteins also enable the cell to interact with its environment. The entire structure of the plasma membrane can be described as a fluid mosaic model. The phospholipid bilayer has properties resembling fluids, and the differing proteins and their attachments on either side of the membrane resemble a mosaic. The plasma membrane is the gatekeeper of the cell, allowing certain substances in and out of the cell at certain times in certain amounts. Diffusion is a process in which substances move across a membrane from an area of high concentration to an area of lower concentration, or between areas of opposite electrical charges. This is called the electrochemical gradient. Small, non-charged particles primarily gases such as oxygen and carbon dioxide, can diffuse through the plasma membrane by moving in between the phospholipids in the bilayer. However, the cell needs to control what enters and leaves, and so transport proteins aid in the selective movement of other molecules across the membrane without the input of energy. Through facilitated diffusion, larger molecules, polar molecules, and charged ions use channel proteins embedded in the bilayer. The transport of other substances requires a special carrier that will bind the substance on one side of the membrane, which triggers a conformation change in the protein carrier, causing it to release the substance on the other side. When the substance being moved across the membrane is water, the process is called osmosis. The cytoplasm of the cell, as well as the interstitial fluid, is composed of solutions. The solvent, usually water, moves across a semi-permeable membrane toward a higher solute concentration, consisting of various molecules or ions, until equilibrium of the solutions is reached. The plasma membrane contains proteins called aquaporins, which are specialized channels for the movement of water during osmosis. A cell in a hypertonic environment will have water move from the inside of the cell toward the higher concentration of solutes in the solution outside the cell. In a hypotonic solution, the concentration of solutes is higher inside the cell than the outside environment, so water will diffuse into the cell. When the solutions on either side of the membrane reach equilibrium, they are referred to as isotonic. When substances need to be driven against their concentration gradient from low to high concentrations, active transport is required. This process uses energy to move a substance across the membrane using selective protein carriers. The sodium-potassium pump is a specialized membrane protein carrier, common in most animal cells, that moves sodium and potassium ions across the plasma membrane. ATP fuels the pump in the movement of these ions from low to high concentrations. Moving sodium ions outside of the cell, where they become concentrated, and bringing potassium ions into the cell, where their concentration is higher relative to the outside. In other instances of active transport, the concentration gradient created from the action of one pump can be used as the input of energy to drive a different pump a process known as coupled transport. The large concentration gradient of sodium ions is used to bring glucose into the cell against its concentration gradient. The plasma membrane, with its lipid bilayer and various embedded proteins, 
provides a barrier between the internal cellular environment and the environment surrounding the cell. The structure and function of the plasma membrane, coupled with the processes of moving materials into and out of cells, allow for the metabolic action cells need to function, as well as for the continuation of life. To finish up, let's try and answer a few questions. Um, once you've answered these questions, you can close your browser, and then you are uh, prepared to do the Learn Smart series and to do the um, post-chapter questions. Um, so, I hope you enjoyed this electronic lecture series, and I will see you back in class next week.